Hi, it's Chris here from Tech Tablets. I've successfully flashed over my Peepo W3F to dual boot. Now, it took a little while to do, uh, mainly because the files, they just took so long to download off those Chinese servers were incredibly slow. But I'll show you the boot menu. It comes up. It's very similar to the Tech Class system. In fact, it's probably it is the same kind of system they're using. So we get that dual boot menu here, we've got the same kind of selecting screen that you see on the Tech Class 1, so you can disable that menu or not. Uh, and I'll just go into Android now, so select Android, and it's got a little tiny button there that says Sure, which is interesting, instead of saying Start or something, which I think it should be saying. Uh, the Android ROM, as you'll see now, uh, boots straight into English. For me, it was all in English, and it's a really nice ROM. It's 100% uh, stock pretty much. There is no bloatware whatsoever. So you can see it's changing over now from Windows and finally now booting into Android. Now the uh, the mouse, the trackpad works, the keyboard works. What I found out that doesn't work is the shift key. So if you want all the upper row here using the shift key, it doesn't seem to work or at least I can't seem to figure out how to configure that with the keyboard. So this is the Android ROM here. And you can see here that it's kind of uh, pretty much, yeah, well, it's really stock. Look at it. I mean, there's no bloatware whatsoever on there that you could consider bloat, that I would consider bloat. So, I mean, that's pretty good. You can see there. Sorry about all the reflections. This screen tends to be quite reflective. So, no bloat there whatsoever. Play Store's working. Just go into that, so there was no issues there, didn't have to fix the build prop or try and move over the Google services, play services and any of that sort of thing. That's all working fine. Uh, the cameras, they they work as well. Show you that. Oh, looking at the camera there. So the cameras, they are all working. You can take photos and everything just fine. As I said, yeah, Play Store works, internet, and the keyboard. If I try and just get, for example, the at symbol here, uh, it just comes up with the number two. So it's not working the shift key for some reason, or the, maybe the other shift key is going to work. No. So that's just one little problem that I have discovered that uh, it's not working for some reason. So in the function key, well, it just seems that that doesn't seem to want to work in Android, so that's something to think about. Maybe there will be an update for that. There is an over-the-air update system for the ROM. Yeah, that's working fine. It's a little, a little slow, but the website's quite heavy on images. So if I go back into a home screen or the settings here, sorry, and I'll just show you that there is a update system that they do have, but this is no updates. So you have uh, system updates and system update is two. It says the system's up to date, so that seems like a, the Google one, and then you've got the wireless update here, the ROM version, and I've checked that, and it comes back saying that there's no updates. So there is no updates for that. You can see the mouse cursor on the screen there. So that is working. And it's Android 4.4.4. Hopefully you can see that. Let's come up there. And the build of the kernel version, well, it's January the 30th, so oh, it's a little bit old. And I will, it does say here, uh, where is it? Not from the swipe down menu like the cube system. Increase the brightness, maybe that will help. That's better. So if I hold down the power button, it will now come up to like a power off, reboot, and then this is boot to Windows. But it doesn't seem to boot directly straight into Windows, it just goes to that boot menu again. I'll show you that now. So it says, okay, your micro PC will boot to Windows, and it will actually just boot to the boot menu. Now instructions for 
flashing this to dual boot I will have up on techtablets.com there's just a couple of uh, well a small little hiccup along the way uh, flashing the BIOS uh, and then flashing the Android images over which I'll just later show you this is going to boot into Windows now so it didn't go directly into Windows it just went to that boot menu So it's not the fastest system, like the Q1 seems to be a lot faster. And there's also another issue here that it seems that the Windows 8.1 Bing version is not activated or not activating. Why this is, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, Peepo will have a solution to that. Probably not. So if you do have your own Windows 8.1 key, maybe you can use that or just install your own version. So if you have a look here, if I go into the PCs, you'll see that it's not activated and I can't seem to activate it. So that's right here, Windows is not activated and activate Windows see it's just telling me that uh, yeah, basically the key's not working oh, one thing I didn't show you was free storage in Android you get just under 5 gigabytes and in Windows you get 12.6 I've only just installed that so when your Windows updates and all that starts to happen you're bound to lose another it's easy going to eat into that, maybe 2 gigabytes, 3 gigabytes, so you're going to have around 10, 9 or 10 gigabytes free. So there's not a lot, so this was something to consider. Now this is the 32 gigabyte version. On the Peepo W3, I do not know if you can flash this. It's something that will be needed to look into because you'll need to probably edit the partition tables for that. And I did the flashing, they say to make 3 USB drives. Um, which I did at the beginning, so I got some, some sticks, uh, USB memory sticks here set up for that. But what I'll just do is I'll show you the BIOS and just a couple of little tips here that when I was flashing things, uh, it's much easier to rename the BIOS. Because you'll see the BIOS file is just incredibly long winded. And I just renamed it to BIOS when I flashed it. But there will be a guide up on Tech Tablets, and I'll include a link in the video description here of that. So when you when you're going to flash it, most of the work it's all going to be done through the EFI shell. So this is where you need to go into, and and that's where you flash, of course, the the dual boot BIOS from there. Um, which will be, the guide will be up on the website. What I did have a problem was is when I was going to go and flash all the the Android ROM over in the image, it said the instructions aren't very clear. They just said to launch, launch that, and then it will automatically happen. And I was clicking that, and it wasn't going into it. But what you had to do is to launch the EFI shell file system, go into it, and then keep hitting enter, and it would lo load. Sorry, from the actual stick straight away, and go into it, and then it would boot into the Droid boot mode and you could start, it would start automatically flashing the image. So it wasn't really that hard to do. Once I got over the, the problem with the BIOS file name being really long, I just renamed that, went in there, and you're just using the commands, you use the FT, FPT, I think it is, uh, dash F BIOS bin, it will start to flash it. But that's all going to be up on techtablets.com. There will be a guide up shortly. Uh, so if you're seeing this video a few days after it's actually been published, then the guide will be up on techtablets.com. So please check that out if you are interested in flashing your Peepo W3F over to dual boot. Thanks for watching this video. If you did like it, please do give me a thumbs up. And do subscribe for more videos on these uh, type of Chinese tablets if that's your thing and that's what you're interested in. Now, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye for now.